What's up everybody, Fran Grams, Banana Grams here, back with another Pikmin video. Today, I'm going to be talking about some lost Pikmin concept art that isn't really lost anymore because everyone in the Pikmin community has talked about it and knows about it, but hey, if you're one of those people who doesn't, or if you just love hearing me ramble about Pikmin, well stay tuned. And I already made a video on this 5 months ago, but that's like 5 decades in YouTube time, and there's no info we figured out about Pikmin 4 that I feel is interesting to like apply to this concept art. So let's get right into it. Alright, so long story short, back in 2014, some lucky Nintendo interns were able to get their hands on this little book that was given out by Nintendo themselves that contained images of concept art for Pikmin types that weren't used in Pikmin 3. And yeah, this was after the release of Pikmin 3, so I feel like Nintendo wouldn't have done this before Pikmin 3 release, which makes sense. But if you look closely, there is one thing that looks quite familiar to what we see now is not an unused Pikmin type. The Glow Pikmin. This is really cool. That means that nine years ago, the concept of Glow Pikmin literally was already made available to the public. And that's interesting to me because knowing Nintendo and their track record with their secrecy and the lengths they go to to keep stuff secret, I'm surprised they even put Glow Pikmin in the game to begin with in Pikmin 4 because... I don't know, I guess if they knew that this concept art was already out there for years, I would have thought that they'd maybe want to change course and make a whole new Pikmin type that, I guess, just keeps the surprise alive. But no, they still went for it. I guess they were just really married to the idea of Glow Pikmin being in the game. I don't remember exactly what I said about this little concept image of the Glow Pikmin back in my old video, but that little onion that it's looking at, might as well have been the prototype for those dirt mounds that were revealed in Pikmin 4. The mounds that the Glow Pikmin come out of. But that's just a guess. But the reveals don't stop there. Because back way back when, not only were Glow Pikmin revealed, but also, I guess, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, a prototype for what soon became Ochi was revealed in this little booklet as well. Look at him, just carrying around all your Pikmin. And... I'm sure a lot of people are going to be thinking, why couldn't they just stick with this design? It looks like a little bulb or bulb man. But it makes sense, in my opinion, why Nintendo would change it. Because I guess they wouldn't want to confuse like the player base. Like, oh, this bulb man is friendly. Let me walk up to this other large sleeping bulb orb. It's got to be friendly too, right? Nope. So <laughs> I guess it makes sense that Nintendo just made this little guy Ochi. A nice cute dog, which I've grown to love. Now, while we're on the topic of Pikmin ideas and concepts that remained unused until the release of Pikmin 4, let's talk about an enemy from Pikmin 4 that has got me excited. And it's not really a spoiler if you've seen, like, the first two main gameplay trailers. You ready? The Tree Borbs, baby. That's right. Now, you may be asking, Frangrams, why are these guys called Tree Borbs? Well, I've hinted at it before, but here's a little image from the player guide for Pikmin 1 that explains the origins of these juvenile bulb orbs. Now, near the end here, it says, Juvenile greater grub dogs live in treetops until developing spots, then fall to the ground to begin a similar predatory behavior. So you may be confused, right? I was at first. What do you mean juvenile bulb orbs? Aren't the juvenile ones these small red dwarf bulb orbs? You may think that if you were a normal person, but apparently... Nintendo wanted to make it as confusing as possible when it came to the evolution of a bulb orb. These albino-looking dwarf bulb orbs are the true middle ground between bulb orb larvae and the big sleeping bulb orbs we see in the games. Not the small red ones. Those guys are apparently from a different family or a different species of animal in the Pikmin universe. I know, I don't know why Nintendo did that, but hey, this is just really cool, right? I mean... Nintendo's really reaching into the backlogs of Pikmin info to just make Pikmin 4 as awesome as possible. And I haven't even played the game yet. Now, if for some reason you didn't know about this little concept art booklet for Pikmin up until this video, I'm going to speed run through the rest of the Pikmin types that were revealed in it. Or if you did know, I'm going to talk about why I think maybe they didn't come back in Pikmin 4 and just stayed concept art. For example, we're going over to the Cyan Pikmin here. They were going to move slowly and restore buildings with mucus. Now, the move slowly part, that doesn't seem very pleasing to anyone. Like, if they get flowers, what would be the point of them to move slowly still? Like, that would be the worst. Like, a Pikmin type that straggled behind the rest of your crew? No, thank you. But it's redeeming grace or whatever would have been restoring buildings with mucus. And, eh, 
I feel like you're gonna need a cooler superpower than restoring buildings with your mucus to make up for the fact that you're slow. Sorry, Cyan Pikmin, even though it is my favorite design of the bunch. Then we had the green Pikmin, which would have formed bridges, and they would have been parasitic, and I guess they would have been good for farming? I'm not sure what that last part means. This is like a translation of the little notes that were on that book. And, okay, this is the one that I feel a lot of people thought were going to be in the game, myself included, but... The form bridges part, we've already found out that in Pikmin 4, there's a new mechanic where you use raw materials to form bridges and make walls that you could climb up, which I think is really cool. It's an awesome mechanic introduced to the game that would have made green Pikmin useless, other than the fact that they were going to be parasitic. And that would have been a game changer, though. You would have been able to, I guess, infect other enemies with these parasite Pikmin and control them, much like Bowman. But yeah, unfortunately, it didn't make it in. It looks like it didn't check all the boxes for Nintendo. Up next, we got the Carapace Pikmin. I guess there were no notes provided for these guys. And the design is quirky, but what were they going to do? I'm imagining they would have acted like an umbrella to protect some of your Pikmin from being crushed. That would have been really cool, but Pikmin or the games in the franchise are already kind of easy enough. Do we really need a Pikmin type that just acts like a shield for some of your Pikmin? But that's just me assuming what it would have done. I could be wrong. Then we got the Black Pikmin. They would have been evolved to adapt to cold climates. Now, this, I didn't think about this last time I made a video on this concept art, but now I'm wondering, why would we need a Pikmin type to adapt to cold climates? Would it have been a sort of Legend of Zelda type of thing where you could only be in cold climates for a certain amount of time until your health runs out? Would maybe Nintendo have introduced a mechanic where your Pikmin types can't support maybe the heat of an environment? Maybe a, an area would have lava around it that only red Pikmin would be able to travel in? Or Black Pikmin will be able to travel in if it was like a really snowy area. That, once again, would have been a big game changer for the series that I don't know if a lot of people would have been fans of. Like, I like the fact that a lot of Pikmin could come with you in any area. Except for like water areas or straight up fire. But, yeah, making climate a hazard in itself for the Pikmin? I don't know if that would have like gone through well with the audience. Up next, we had the brown Pikmin. <laughs> they had a large body. Would have been able to take 10 pellets to make one seed. Fast construction, strong. I feel like a lot of these abilities from these unused Pikmin types are just already, I guess, glossed over in Pikmin 4 with the new mechanics being introduced. Like, we already have Ochi. He's already strong. He has a large body. And fast construction? The Pikmin construction was never that slow to begin with, so... I guess fast construction isn't that big of a deal to include in the game. So, once again, it makes sense why this guy wasn't included. And plus, he looks way too much like the purple Pikmin. I mean, come on. Up next, we have my least favorite unused Pikmin type of the bunch. The pink Pikmin. I just do not like what these guys stand for. I don't like their design. They just seem way too small. Even compared to Pikmin. Like, Pikmin are already small enough. I wouldn't want a type that's just half their size. They would have been able to stick to the wall and walk which is a mechanic that we're able to do in Pikmin 4 without the need for a specific type, which is way more convenient for the players, and I like that. They would have not been strong, and it would have been easy to make seeds. I'm assuming that means it would have been easy to just hoard up on <laughs> this Pikmin type. So that just shows that it would have been quantity over quality with this guy, and as we all know, the Pikmin franchise is about quality. Well, that's enough of me talking. I want to know what you guys think. Go down in the comments below and let me know if you wish maybe some of these unused Pikmin types were in Pikmin 4 instead of, say, Glow Pikmin or Ochi. Or are you glad with the ones we did get in the game? Or are you hoping that a Pikmin 5 comes out with all of these unused types, except for the pink Pikmin, coming back in the game? Let me know. And as always, if you love Pikmin and you just want your YouTube homepage filled with Pikmin content, make sure to drop a like and subscribe because that's all I basically talk about on this channel.